battle people. This is kind of a special video, and we're gonna have some fun. You, me, and Psycho Bunny. Now, first of all, thank you to Boss for sending pedals. Um, and sending one of these. This is a limited edition vinyl, and I have the OD1 one. one. I, I don't know if that's all OD1. I actually haven't listened to it because I don't have a record player. But um, my brother does, so I will. I have number 133 out of 300. And this is really, really cool. They did that. Look, there's even a little certificate. And the whole thing is yellow. Pretty damn cool. Now I gotta get that in there again. Um, we're not looking at the Audi one. Boss re-released pedals, which by now you know because you've seen other people do it. I'm kind of late to the party, but that's okay. I had stuff to do, and s thought to myself, let's let's wait till everyone else has done their videos, so I can do different things. Now we're looking at. They even sent me a t-shirt, Metal Zone t-shirt. I, I didn't dare. I wear stupid, weird t-shirts, wearing a Metal Zone t-shirt. I actually wore that in a live stream with a band, watch it. Pretty funny. So, thank you boss for sending the t-shirt, by the way. Metal Zone t-shirt rules. Now, I applaud a company with the balls of boss. Boss balls. Because the Metal Zone ranks amongst one of the worst pedals ever. I know that's a tough statement, probably undeserved, but there's reasons why people think it's a bad pedal. Now, it isn't, but it is a joke. The Metal Zone in the world of pedals is a joke. Brian Wampler did an all Metal Zone pedal board where he actually took pedal, uh, Metal Zones and modded them to be different kind of pedals, but it was an all Metal Zone board. It has become a joke. To go and re-release it as a Wazacraft pedal takes balls. That's like, no, that is a good pedal. We stand behind it. We're going to re-release it and make it more expensive. Way to go, boss. Now, I have a metal zone. It was actually one of the very few pedals that I bought before I had any pedals at all because I was looking for a great lead tone. And I also used it wrong at the time. What is Waza? Waza! Oh. Um... It's a Knäckebrot in German for our German friends. It's a kind of bread. Um, but that's not Waza. Waza Craft means uh, they're made in Japan. They are more expensive than the normal series. But they use higher grade components. They use uh, that's a better buffer, lower noise floor, all that stuff that I just read in the brochure. They do have two different modes. This one has the standard mode and the C mode, which stands for custom, in which the EQ has been shaped and the gain circuit is different. I don't know what that means. We'll figure it out. But it is the same pedal, but better with a different mode, which hopefully adds something. I'm pretty sure you've seen this pumped into power amps. So yes, Ola showed that you can take the metal zone and uh, Colin also showed that, and Russell, and m many people, that you can take the metal zone, pump it directly into the effects loop, return, and therefore using it as a preamp with better results. Well, better results depending on what amp you use. If your amp's preamp doesn't take pedals well, well then it's obviously better to take that into the power amp. We're not going to do that because other people have done that. What I'm going to do is do what other people haven't done in the same video, pop it into a shit ton of amps. I think right now we've got 9 or 10 on. So I will do that and show you how this, uh, how the amps react to it. Should I go into... No, well, well, let's look at the controls. We have level, pretty standard. We have distortion, which is the gain. We have high and low. And that's already where you can see one of the problems comes in. They are very fiddly knobs. And then we have mids right here. That's mid gain. And this is mid frequency. Now I know you, you might not be the guy that wants to see a guy talk about something, but I'll talk about it. This is the problem of boss and the problem of the metal zone. It's not a major problem. But the issue of boss pedals that they have, that boss is fighting with, or that, that boss has to deal with, is the form factor of the pedal. 
has a lot of space for this mega tanky kind of I cannot break this with anything mega big foot switch. Go to the pedal side, Harry. Oh, by the way, Harry from Harry and a Guitar is switching for me. Thank you for coming over from England to do that. Now, this is, of course, the typical boss mega foot switch with the rubber, and you can uh, unscrew this to get to the battery, which is a great system. This has always been the iconic boss pedal, but that means it doesn't allow for a lot of space for controls. So the most controls boss can fit here is one, two, three, four. If the pedal was bigger or it was a different company that had more space below those, these would be bigger knobs on more surface. So let's say, um, let's say it was this, okay? I know this is a one player pedal, but um, you already have one, two, three, four, five knobs. So there'd be space for a six knob and you would have bigger knobs with a bigger range to control. So boss has limited space. Okay, that's it. But because of that limited space, they are sharing controls on one pot. And that means they have very small pots. So that means, yeah, it's a little bit more fiddly and easier to go too far. That is one issue with the metal zone. That what you set up is a little bit more difficult to set up simply because of the real estate on it. Not because of what it sounds like at all. That's not the problem. The real estate's the problem. And the fact that they gave you, the user, a huge range of EQ, a lot of boost on high, a lot of boost on low, a lot of low and high on, on boost and cut on the mids. And also, sweepable mids, semi-parametric, which means you have control over which mid frequency you boost or cut. <laughs> Careful. The Metal Zone was an inexpensive pedal. It always sold for under 100 euro. Therefore, it was primarily bought by beginners or by, it was affordable. So people with not a lot of money or beginners like me back in the day bought a Metal Zone. Beginners do not know how to set up a parametric EQ or a semi-parametric semi EQ. And that's why the Metal Zone has such a bad reputation. It was inexpensive and tiny fiddly controls, which resulted in people that didn't know what to do with it, setting it up wrong. And that's why it has that can of bees kind of... kind of a reputation, whoa. And beginners having access to a lot of boost on three different frequencies and having access to mids, which they don't understand yet, means there are probably more sounds on the metal zone that are bad than they are good. But the good ones are really good. You just have to be careful with the controls. This is why this has a bad reputation. Because of user error. Not because it's a bad pedal. I'm pretty sure it didn't even have to be redesigned as a Waza pedal. The original one is totally great. If you know how to set it up, and you set it up carefully. We're going to go into bad and good sounds. So, right now, I'm going into the Rev Dynamis um, with the Tone King Sky King set up as a cab. It's a V30 kind of cab. Mic with an MTP440 from uh, Lewitt. And a Creamback loaded 412 from the Ox. Thinking about that now, that's probably run the torpedo as well and go into a different cab. Now we have options. Let's explore this baby. Probably the longest metal zone video you've ever seen. So, right now, with the Rev Dynamis on clean, through the cab, and the aux. And of course, I'm on the bridge pickup on this Mayonnaise Hydra Elite 6. It's a great guitar, especially for that sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
You already can hear that little bit pronounced mids there, but that's okay. Focus mids. <laughs> It's not a blues pedal, come on. Um, where we're at right now, let's just go into the custom mode and see what happens. Aha! I like. So back to standard mode. Much more B like. I'm not sorry, gonna to refer to that, but hey. That's not a bad sound at all. Let's crank up gain. Easy to get that out of a mix because it's very piercing in the mids. Now I might want to get that down a bit. Now I know what parametric mids are. If you're a beginner, it's easy to fuck that up. So I'm gonna go and boost the mids and find the frequency. And bam, it's gone. But you saw, it's gone from here, it's there. The range on the EQ is just ridiculously finicky. Most of the range of that EQ you don't need, so they should have, well, changed the range. Let's see if in the custom mode they did. Actually, I don't know. I haven't tried this. <laughs> I really like the custom mode, that's pretty damn awesome. Still a huge range. You can see if you're if you are new to this, you will go and move the knob way more than that, and you're gonna end up with sounds like this. I'm doing but um yeah that's that's the problem of the pedal and look the knob is actually not that far up that's probably where people set the knob which where the where the frequency is right now not a problem Now we're in the B glass. In the literature said, whoa, it's got a huge EQ range. People from Boss, that's exactly why people don't like this. Why people fuck it up in how to set it up. So the thing that Boss in this case is proud of, get rid of it. Reduce about two-thirds of the EQ range and you have a pedal that's almost impossible to sound bad. In this case, it's a huge range and it's too much. No one needs that much boost on the mid. Now you're gonna say Henning, but, but just don't set it up that way. Well, 
if it's something no one's ever going to use, why have that much range on it? That's what I'm saying. So, I really liked... Here's the problem. I can't just set it up visually again. Doesn't work, because it's so detailed that I really have to listen. <laughs> That's a great sound boss! Killer! Well done! Um, let's look at low and high. Why? Why? Reduce two thirds of the range of the knob and even noobs will be able to set this up beautifully. That is already too much. This is why this pedal has such a bad reputation. Tiny knob, big range, problems. Now, if you can set it up right, no problems. This is a good pedal. Especially the Waza one with the custom mode. Hell yeah. Pretty damn great. And of course now I can tweak it with a little bit more mids, a little bit less. You want a little bit more piercing? not in a cap that's actually traditionally made for metal. If we go to the 
torpedo. I'm now in a 412 Mesa. <laughs> And so on. Works great. Okay, let's go to the section where we're going to turn up the amps. Now, should we stay in that Mesa cab? I'm gonna go with yes, because I think that makes more sense. And we're gonna stay on the custom mode. I really like what we have now. I'm gonna have to tweak it depending on the amp, which will go into the diesel power, which should have more high end, because that is a um, twinish type of clean sound. Diesel power by itself. It's got bite, but holy crap, that's great! Pretty damn great! All of a sudden, not so great anymore, and I moved about three millimeters on the knob. You get the point. Moving on, um, well, Marshall JCM 800 on the low input. It wants more level, which is interesting. Morgan AC20. It's a Vox type amp, not very metal. Um, um, we have uh, the orange rocker verb. That's a very different sound. Thank you. 
Oh, Jet City Emilia has a lot of bite. I would need to tweak it a bit, but you can get that there. Um, very interesting, the Not Master Volume Laney LA30BL, killer amp. Whoa! Crap, that's good. Uh, Friedman Smallbox, that's a plexi type amp in case you have something like this at home. Like so. seem to have enough headroom for that. Uh, it's already... Uh, same thing as the next one, which is a basement type amp, the Achilles Argos. It's probably not gonna work. You hear that it's already kind of blowing up there. It's not the amp. It's This is an amp for... Actually more like this. It's not gonna, it's not gonna. It's too blown up. Um, and now let's go to the Tone King itself. We even have a Tone King camera. Don't know why, but we have a Tone King camera. Get this shit. Tone King by itself in clean. <laughs> And so on, and so on. So, is the boss metal zone one of the worst pedals ever? No, it's not. Is the metal zone Waza better than the metal zone? 
it's more expensive, and yes, it's better because it got the custom mode, the custom mode, the custom mode, which um, which I like a little bit more. However, the biggest misunderstanding of the pedal is simply it's inexpensive, or used to be the other one used to be inexpensive, which means being purchased by people that misuse it because they don't have the necessary experience. The interface being crammed on a very small space simply because of the classic layout of the classic boss pedals. That's just how they are, and they have to deal with it. But that means you have six controls on the space where four should be. And that means you have very tiny controls. And in addition to that, they have a ginormous range on the EQ. I'm thinking the boost and cut on this EQ should be a third of what it actually is. And then you're good. No one's going to use the extreme range on this thing. If you have more control, it's all good. You could see I was fiddling with it a little bit. I fiddle with pedals every day and you're still fighting with it a little bit. If you nail the right setting, that thing gets you great results. No question about that. But don't go into it, turn it on, go ee, 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 and you're good. You'll have to learn your amp, learn the pedal with your amp and be aware that a lot of settings will be too much or too little or too much hole in the mids, not enough hole in the mids. That is the downfall of the metal zone. The metal zone the way it was and the metal zone the way it is now as Waza. However, great tones can be had. It's up to you, the user. Maybe at one point, Boss will do a metal zone Waza 2 or MT2W2 or whatever, where you simply just have much less range on everything. Um, I think that would solve a lot of the problems that beginners have with it. So, I'm thinking, well done, boss. You should have reduced the range even more. But generally, great tones can be had. So, no, it's not the worst pedal out there. That's all I can say. Um, thanks to Harry. Crazy Bunny, thanks to Boss, and animals at the end. Abstract destruction, the liquid of life, you and I. The banks align with lies, the future is. Inside, it flows into a child, a great divide. Blueprints passed down the line. 